I'm here with Laura Bryant from Prism Yarns and Barry Klein from Trendsetter Yarns to talk about color. Hi, Laura and Barry. Hi. Hi Good to see you. Thanks for being here. You bet. So now, I have a drawer at home that looks a lot like this. All yes. sorts of colors and textures, and frankly, it kind of gives me a headache. I don't know what to do with it, and I, I go and make a cup of coffee, and I really want to make it look like this. How do I do that? You, What's you, the difference here? You do want to make it look like that. <laughs> this is everything in the world and total no organization, and there needs to be some organizing visual structure to it, and that's what we've done in the second panel. And I will say that every piece of yarn that is in this crazy thing is also in the more organized thing. And the way that we do that is by not considering color so much as weight of the color, meaning light at one end and dark, dark or at heavy other. at the other end. Mm -hmm. And somehow we fit the brights in there too. And I'm gonna do that real quick now with the yarns that are on this table because we have kind of a mishmash here. And so you're starting with dark right now and you're mm -hmm. moving toward light. I am, and I'm gonna make these crazy wild things fit in there as well. The nice part about doing this, Kim, is that once you get colors in order, it's perfect if you have stash, if you have different things and you want to blend them together, if you want to do striped sweaters, or if you want to take different thicknesses and blend them, you can even cut out different portions of a color range and know that if it's balanced, you can work through there into any design. And so a lot of freeform crocheters and knitters could benefit from this as well. Absolutely. It's perfect for everybody, but freeform is a big benefit. It is. And look at this. So and Laura's look. already gotten this in There order. you are. And here, the, the guiding principle here is that we, it's not just light to dark. It also encompasses very bright colors. Now, where would you put this screaming green? Well, if you put it here, you see that it just jumps off the table. If you put it up with the white, it also jumps off. So you start moving it until, lo and behold, mm -hmm. it actually sits in that group. Right. Okay? Um, we so you just have tend, to... Sorry, sorry we all ahead. tend to want to do everything singularly. Right. One next to the other. And what right. Laura's done is blend them in kind of lines so that the same hue, the same balance, or the same weight of color is lined up together. What it means is that if you then do this, you can now take selections from any quadrant and they'll all work together across this way, okay? That yeah. will all, all these colors will work together and they will. And they, tr they try to teach, to prove me wrong all the time in classes and it never works. <laughs> it never works. It's really true. <laughs> and so then what, what do we have here? Right. This is a combination of, of different colors. Exactly. What we've done in this instance is we've taken one blendy. It's a little textured yarn and it's multicolored. On the top swatch, we've blended it with a filler of olive green mohair. And then in this instance, any of the colors of the greens and yellows tend to disappear and what's popping are the purples, the blues, and the peaches. Mm -hmm. The same component is mixed with a lilac or a purple down here. And when that happens, all the blue and red tones disappear and what's popping are the opposites. So it's the same component changing a filler. And so this is a great way of thinking about if you happen to have a sweater's worth of one type of yarn and you want to mix in some other colors with it, you can make decisions that way. Yes, exactly. absolutely. And just re the recognition that, of course, if you put it with purple mohair, it's going to look more purple. But what happens is what becomes important. The accents become important. It's what you're right. pointing out that way. It's the colors that pop will change right. depending on the, the component. And so then say we want to do color work. Color work. But on, in both instances, our, our model sweaters are the same sweater worked in two different color ways. Thank you so much, Laura and Barry. I learned a lot. See you next time. And remember, make time for yarn every day. Knitting daily. Make time for yarn every day. Visit our website for free access to all the patterns, project ideas, tips, and techniques from this season of Knitting Daily. Log on and get printer-friendly patterns and more at knittingdailytv.com. This is show 306. Take your knitting to the next level. Visit knittingdailytv.com for your free e-booklet of 13 tips, hints, and secrets to improve your knitting skills from the designers featured on Knitting Daily TV. Knitting Daily has been sponsored in part by Interweave Magazines and Books, inspiring, encouraging, and supporting creative self-expression through art and craft media, interweavestore.com. Webs, America's Yarn Store, a source for knitting and crocheting yarns and supplies, yarn.com. Taki Stacy Charles, feel the desire, knit your passion. TakiStacyCharles.com TNNA, the National Needle Arts Association, the organization for independent needle arts retailers. TNNA.org